So what we're looking at here today is to do some frequency division. This comes from the oscillator modules um, video. There's a comment in there about dividing the frequency down and so I decided to do that. So I've got a 16 megahertz oscillator module sitting here right now. These are roughly TTL level out of what they're supposed to be. And here we got a bunch of TTL chips. I know they're old but they still work. And so we're going to take this 16 megahertz here and we're going to divide it by, at first, 16 and then by 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 and just see what we get. If we look up on the scope, we'll see the uh, waveform that's coming out of the module here right now, the actual 16 megahertz. Um, I've got the uh, clips on the end of the probe here, the little, the little wire clip on here to give us a slightly better look at it. But I'm going to change that out and uh, put the regular ground leads on it so I can go back and forth and uh, show you some of the, uh, the voltage, some of the spots around uh, the circuit. And we'll take a look first after we get this hooked up. And we're going to take a look after the first, first module here and this is going to be the 1 megahertz out. And you'll see on our scope here it's measuring Essentially 1 megahertz looks pretty good and you'll also notice that it's a reasonably decent square wave The top of it doesn't look so great and you'll also notice the ripple on it, too And that's again because I've now got the uh, the ground lead on it and um, it's got a bit of distance to travel and uh, So we don't get quite as clean a wave when we're looking at it. So that's again the 1 meg if I go down further To the next chip and we look here and we have 100k 100 kilohertz and it's still going for us and we go down to the next chip here and we now have 10 kilohertz and again still a reasonably decent square wave not the cleanest on the top but looks okay otherwise and if we go down here to the to the 1 kilohertz there we are One kilohertz and if we go to the end of this it's a chain which is pin 12 on here and we look at that and we see 100 Hertz and still we have a reasonably decent square wave so now we can take a listen to it I've got a little module a little um, amplifier over here that's hooked up and I've got a little tiny probe on the end here. And if I go over here to the 1 kilohertz. And over here we have 2 kilohertz. And down here we have 100 hertz. Doesn't sound so great because it's a square wave. But nonetheless, that is the frequency of it. So there's our 1 kilohertz test tone. So here's a quick look at the circuit that I've used to uh, give us some sound out of here so that we can have a listen to it. It's, I, I like to know that I can t bring it down from 16 megahertz to 100 hertz right here. And uh, that's this little box right here is this guy. Uh, bypass capacitor to just take away the DC. And this little probe is our that little wire that I had right here just through a 10k resistor to knock it down a whole bunch so that it doesn't give it too much to this little amplifier. So today you might wonder why you would use a, a setup like this here. Well, it's more of the concept of this that you, you have these things available to you plus other everything else that's ever been invented since 7400 series started. So um, it's, it's cheap and it's easy. I happen to have the chips as well, but it's, um, it, it has a, it's reliable. It does, a, it does a good job. It also does it at five volts. Um, so there's a lot of things that aren't up near that uh, voltage output like this SI5351 module right here. This guy will go from 8 kilohertz up to 160 megahertz and you can program it and you can have three separate frequency outputs too. Um, it's, it's definitely something that's usable, there's no doubt about that. Mind you, it doesn't put out the, the voltage that this does, but 3.2 volts uh, open circuit on this and about 1.6 when it's loaded. But uh, it's, there's, there's options. There's other things you can do. And this is just one thing. There's many more 
uh, options. So just a few other things for thought. We have the SI5351 frequency generator, which I just covered. Um, you can do this in CMOS as well, and there's a, the 4017 decade counter is kind of nice because you can get it to divide by 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 10, depending on how you hook it up. It'll divide by different numbers. Uh, and if you really want to get fast with some of these things, because this, this basically is a, is a prescaler, divide by 10 or divide by 2 or 4 or 8 or whatever you need. Um, there's, here's, as an example, here's one chip of many that's a prescaler, works between 4 and 18 gigahertz, divides by 8. The chip costs about 30 bucks. It's really tiny, so yeah, you've got to mount the thing. But it's, it's amazing. There's, the, the frequency division is used all over the place. Uh, the 9.6 megahertz down to 60 hertz, if I took this 16 megs out and plug this little module right there in, which is a 9.6 megahertz, I get 60 cycles per second at the end here. Instead of the 100, I get 60 hertz. And uh, don't forget that because you're going through a whole pile of chips here, you have propagation delay. Each chip takes time. Each gate in each chip takes time to do things. So the, the signals that are coming out of this thing are not in uh, sync. They're, they're not synchronized in in any fashion and uh, they they will all be each one will be different depending on the on the pin that comes out of that particular chip on what comes out of that pin so just a just a few thoughts